team this morning. Come on. Hey, if you, have a, if you have a Bible, I want you to pull it out. If you have a Bible app, I want you to pull it out. If you can write something down today, I'm going to have you write down a few things. Um, it's going to bless you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to strengthen you. Amen? Um, this morning, uh, during pre-service prayer, uh, if you're ever interested, at 9.30 in the morning, we have pre-service prayer. And we were praying, and the Lord just reminded me that this world is coming to an end. Okay? And, and, and I want to encourage you, okay, because I know when you hear comments like that, so often it can breed fear and worry and anxiety into people. And that is not what I want to do this morning. Amen? That is not the heart of God. The heart of God is for you to be encouraged and strengthened and that your hope is in what? In him. So when we see this world, amen, we see this world collapsing, we see darkness taking over, the Bible told us what? Lift up our heads to see what? That our God is coming back, Jesus is coming back. Our hope is not in this planet. Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in the things that we have in this world. Our hope is what? The moment we get to be face to face with Jesus, amen? But here's the deal. I want you to make it to the end, okay? I want you to make it to the end. The enemy has one purpose, to steal, kill, destroy. He will never relent on doing these things in your life to pull you away from your authentic relationship with Jesus. Amen? We want you to have a vibrant, authentic, full relationship with Jesus. Amen? Hey, um, Tim, I forgot to tell you this. During worship, the Lord told me, um, I hope I'm not being, uh, you know, putting you out there too much, but he said, you're believing uh, for a wife? And the Lord said that, that you do not have to worry about that, that the Lord has it and that she is coming and he's gonna bring her to you and it's gonna be a blessing to your life. Amen? Yeah. Okay? All right, go with me to Psalms 23. Psalms 23. Verse one, it says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths. He brings honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valleys, because how many of you know you're gonna walk through some dark valleys in this life sometimes? I will not be afraid. What a beautiful passage. That you can walk through darkness, but you can have confidence. You're not afraid. Why? Because the shepherd is close. Your rod, your staff protects and comforts me. Verse five, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with what? Blessings. Verse six, surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me. What? All the days of my life on this earth until when? Until we transition to the next. Okay? Six verses that will absolutely change your relationship with Jesus if we get it. So point number one today is this. The Lord is my shepherd, okay? The definition of a shepherd is this. I want you to write this down if you can. The definition of a shepherd is to guide, to direct, to lead, to protect, and to provide. Guide, direct, lead, protect, and what? To provide. That is the job of the great shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd, and he provides us with the great gift. The greatest gift we could ever receive is what? The gift of righteousness, okay? Now, oh my gosh. Sometimes when I say that, you all look at me like, what kind of a gift is that? It is the greatest gift you could ever receive 
ever. I know that you think like I would rather God give me a million dollars. No, you don't. You would spend it and you would be gone. But you know what righteousness does? It puts you in right standing with God, puts you into favor, into grace, into blessing with him. And guess what? On the day of judgment, you have no worries, cares, or concerns because Jesus did it all on the cross and gave you righteousness. Amen? I'm going to show you this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3 says, For we who worship by spirit, right? We worship the Lord by spirit are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Jesus Christ has done. We put no confidence in human effort. Woo! Praise God. It's not your effort. It's not your good works. It's not what you can do for God. We have no confidence. Paul goes, I have zero confidence in this. Though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, he said, indeed, I have others who have reason to have confidence in their own efforts. I have even more. Paul goes on in Philippians to go, I was, I, I was trained with the best. He said, I did everything I could in my own strength to follow the law perfectly. I was a Jew of Jew. But he goes, I don't put any effort, any confidence in that effort. Verse seven. I once thought these things were valuable. What things? Your own effort. Your own strength. He said, I thought these things were valuable but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. He's saying there is nothing more important than knowing Christ as what? My shepherd. The shepherd of my life. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting it all garbage. Woo! The moment you have a self-righteous moment, you feel real good about yourself, you feel real good about what you've done this week, you feel real good about how you took care of somebody, and because of that, you think God's gonna bless you and favor you. Paul goes, it's just garbage. (laughs) Have fun having confidence in yourself. Have fun having confidence in your own strength. Paul goes, let me know how that works out when life's falling apart and you need the grace and the goodness and the righteousness of God to show up in your life. Amen? He goes, this is garbage. So that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness by obeying the law. Rather, I became righteous through what? Faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on what? On faith. Your faith. Putting your trust in him. Verse 10, he says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Who wants to experience that? Come on. Why does this matter so much? Because I want want to ask you this question. Why does this matter so much? It matters because Why would you allow somebody to shepherd your life that doesn't want the best for you? We do this all the time in life. We will get into human relationships, connections with people that actually do not want the best for you. They actually want to use you to promote themselves so that they can get to a higher level. Yet Jesus didn't promote himself. He actually sacrificed himself so that he could lift you up. Amen? We have to know that this is important. Why is this important? Because Psalms chapter 5 verse 12 says this, Surely the Lord, you bless the righteous. The righteous. 
And listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to preach this and preach this and preach this and preach this till you start walking in here on Sunday going, I am the righteousness of Christ. I am highly favored. I am blessed because I know that I'm a son and I'm a daughter and I know my position in Christ and it's not based on how I live my life this week, doing the perfect things or not doing perfect things. Amen? Come on. Until you get this in you, you don't realize that God is going to bless who? The righteous, and you are the righteous. Psalms 55, verse 22, cast your burdens on the Lord, release it to him. He will sustain you, hold you up. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Amen? Amen. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes with one thing in mind, to steal, slaughter, destroy. But I've come to give you everything in abundance. Everything. He wants your whole life blessed. He wants your career blessed, your marriage blessed, your children blessed, your finances blessed. Everything that matters to you, he came to give it to you in what? Abundance. And if you want to argue with me, then argue with God, because I didn't write this. (laughs) Amen? These are red letters. These are Jesus' words. He said everything in abundance, more than you can expect. In this life, fullness until you what? Overflow, because that's the life that God wants. He wants you so blessed, so full of joy, so full of hope, so full of the goodness of God that it overflows and it spills out on other people and they go, oh man, thank you. Verse 11, he says, I'm the good shepherd. Jesus goes, I'm the good shepherd who lays down my life as a sacrifice for what? The sheep. Point number two, sheep. God calls us sheep. I don't know if you've ever seen sheep, but sheep, are you, they're just utterly useless without a shepherd. Do you know that? Without a shepherd, sheep are completely lost. They have 0.0 chance of victory. I mean, zero. Sheep will get lost trying to find substance, trying to find their way, and they will literally fall off mountains. Come on, think about this. And this is what God calls us. He goes, you're sheep. All they do all day long is just whine and cry all day long. Bah, bah, bah. I know I am a terrible, terrible. I, I sound like a dying sheep of anything, okay? Just bah, right? They're just whining all day long. Help me. I don't know where to go, Right? Where are we going? They just whine all day long. I'm hungry. Lead me somewhere to eat, right? They whine. They go, I don't like this path. I don't like where we're going. They just whine. They need what? They need a shepherd. They're helpless without the help of the shepherd. And Jesus is telling you, Don't believe in your ability to shepherd your own life. Oh, I should have got a good amen on that. Don't believe in you. You're a sheep. Sheep can't lead themselves. Sheep only get lost. Sheep only get off the path. Listen, you know what that is? That is the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist, what did the devil say? He said, I can be God. I will lift my kingdom above his kingdom. The spirit 
of the Antichrist that's in the earth right now is a spirit that says, I don't need a shepherd. I am my shepherd. I'll follow my heart's desire, and I'll go where I want to go. That's the spirit that's in the earth right now. And the Lord says, don't trust that. You're sheep, and sheep are constantly distracted. Right? Um. Me and Luke have been watching uh, Chicago Bulls highlights on YouTube. I know this is random, but, but there's like, you know, it's like 14 commercials in the highlights, okay? And right now, every commercial is a political commercial, you know? Like Luke can quote these commercials. He goes, no, he said this the other day. He goes, oh, you can't trust Sheriff Brown. He's way too liberal. He knows these stupid commercials by heart because they're just over and over and over again. We get distracted. I want you to vote. I'm not telling you not to vote. But we get so distracted, we think that somehow politics are going to fix this world, that politics are going to fix your life. I don't care what party you're on, what side of the fence you're on. I promise you, both sides are not going to fix your life. Right. Amen? Amen. We, we get so distracted by sports, world crisis. Second Timothy put it this way. He said, you should know this, Timothy. In the last days, it'll be very difficult times. So he tells us, hey, I want you to know in the last days, it's going to be tough. It says, for people will only love themselves and their money. They'll be boastful, proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They'll be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others, have no self-control. They'll be cruel, hate what is good. Do, are we not in that time right now? People hate what is actually good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, puffed up with pride. They will love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious but reject the power that could make them godly. He says, hey, in the last days, don't trust yourself and don't trust others. Because we love trusting others. We love, like, you know, our little Facebook groups. <laughs> you know what I mean? Our little crews on, you know, Facebook and TikTok and all these different things, right? We love finding the people that always agree with everything that we agree with. And if they have an opinion, their opinion becomes what? Our opinion? But how do you know that their opinion is the right opinion? Maybe their opinion is actually the wrong opinion, and maybe God has a different opinion about mankind and people and loving people and caring for people and your neighbor and things like that. Can I get a good amen for that? But we're just sheep that are distracted, right? God is, God is saying something to us. He's saying, listen, I'm, I'm not telling you that, that you should just hope for a good shepherd. The Lord is telling you, you need a good shepherd. You need this. This is vital to your life. And he says, I'm the good shepherd that lays down my life for the sheep. So he's going, you can trust me. I gave my life so that you could trust me so you could follow me because I will actually lead you to victory. Right? Amen. Come on. Point number three is this, human nature. Exodus chapter 32, verse one. When the people saw how long, this is important, how long it was taking Moses to come back down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and they said, come on, they said, let's make some gods who can lead us. Israel had a God, a God that took them into the wilderness on purpose, which we'll talk about. But they said, let's make some gods outside. We're talking about little gods, right? says this, we don't know what has happened to this fellow Moses who brought us 
out of the land of Egypt. Okay, let me tell you something, teach you something about being a sheep. Anytime we believe God is slow, forgotten, or delayed, okay, anytime we think God has been too slow in moving on our behalf, anytime we believe that God has forgotten about us, anytime there is a delay in seeing the blessing or the grace of God, we become really itchy. We become real like finicky. We're like, just like Israel. Where's this Moses fellow? This Moses fellow? You mean the one that God used to rescue you out of slavery? That guy? You're just calling him some fellow? Right? See human nature? Right? Like, oh, we we can't trust this anymore. Where is he? He went up the mountain to talk to God, and he's delayed, and, well, there must be some problem. So we, guess what? I, I guess we need what? We need some other gods. We need a different plan. You see human nature? We go, oh, God, you didn't show up in the timing that I thought you were. God, you didn't come through in the moment that I thought you were gonna come through. Oh God, it didn't happen the way that I thought you would plan for it to happen. So guess what? I'm gonna need to follow a different path now. Come on, somebody. See, the wilderness was a war for what? For worship. God took Israel to what? To the, to the wilderness to what? To worship him there right? Worship is always the war for your soul. What are you going to worship? What are you going to follow? Okay? God brought them into the wilderness, right, to worship him because what? He was their savior. He was their healer, and he was their provider. What does this sound like? What is this a picture of? This is a picture of Jesus and what he would do for us. He'd become our savior, our healer, and our provider. Amen? So God brings them into the wilderness to worship him, but there's a delay. There's a delay. Can I just tell you today, don't freak out when there's a delay. The word actually tells us to do what? To rejoice. Why? Because your confidence is not in your plan. Your confidence is not in you shepherding your life. Your confidence is what? In the grace of God. God was so good to Israel to do what? To save them. He saved them. And then the word tells them, after all these decades of being beaten and being slaves and being broken, that when they left Egypt, they all left what? Healed. And then they all left with what? All of the provision of Israel. Come on. Right? God had a good plan. Through what? His grace. See, I want you to understand something. Faith is always connected to grace. Amen? You think, like, I'm going to move God. You think, like, my actions, what I do, what what I do for him will move God. No, 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 no. It's just you placing your faith in God and knowing that he is good, he's made you righteous, and because of his goodness, his grace will show up and empower you to do things that you could never do on your own. Amen? Come on, somebody. Somebody's gonna get free today in Jesus' name. Listen, there is no victory outside of God's grace. There is no power, there is no strength outside of God's grace and his goodness. But we have to learn to follow it. Let me, let me show you this picture real quick. This is a picture of Michael and Ben, okay? Ben, that giant that was on stage uh, today next to me when we were praying. But this is back in the day, okay? And, and Luke... Luke wasn't born yet, but I wanted to show you this picture because I wanted to tell you this little story of something that I did with my boys when they were growing up, when they were little, 
okay? When Ben, especially when Ben was little, because Ben, you can just see it in his eyes. He's got that like squirrely in his eyes, you know what I mean? He's got that like, that like rascal in his eyes. He's got that like, oh, I gotta get the wiggles out. You know what I mean? Like he was just that kid. He still is that kid, you know what I mean? We always say like, he's just a little bit of an antagonizer. You know what I mean? Like the other day he was just bored and he just was antagonizing Luke. And I was like, what's, what's wrong with you? He was like, I don't know, I'm just bored. <laughs> I'm like, I know. But I remember when the boys were little, one of the things that I would force them to do, literally force them to do, was that when we were in a parking lot or we were in a store or we were like out in a public area, I would force them to hold my hand. And sometimes they would be like, you know, like, no, I don't want to, you know, like, let me go. I want to go over here, you know, look at the candy over here, or I want to go to the toys, you know. I remember one time when Michael was five, I was, like, holding his hand, and he just, like, went limp. <laughs> and just, like, like, and he was, like, I was just dragging him on Meyer, the Meyer floor, okay? He was just on the floor just being drugged, you know? Now, what was I doing? I was teaching them that if they'll hold my hand and if they'll follow me, I will lead them to what? Good things. Right? I wasn't trying to hurt them. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to lead them to destruction. I was trying to show them like, hey, I'm your father and if you'll trust me, I'll show you, I'll lead you to good things. Because I knew that when they were little, right? When they were little, they had to learn to follow me so that someday when they're big, they don't, <laughs> they're big, <laughs> right? Yes, they know that their father loves them and cares for them, but where does their real trust need to be now? It needs to be in the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Listen, trusting the Lord is an art. Learning to follow the Lord is an art. And it takes things like daily questions. I want you to write some of these things down. Okay, right here, I'm gonna give you some questions. Daily questions, like, Lord, where do I have fear in my life? Lord, where do I have fear? I don't actually trust you. I don't actually trust that you're good. I don't actually trust that you have the best for me. Where has fear taken over in my soul, in my mind, in my emotions? These are questions you gotta ask the Lord. You gotta ask questions like, Lord, what do you want me to know and understand about my life that I currently don't? God, what are you thinking? What are you saying today about my life that I don't understand and I don't trust you as a shepherd? These are daily questions. You need to ask God questions like, God, how do you want me to love my kids? Right? Because we have human love. We have if-then love. If you do this right, if you get the right grades, if you do the right thing in sports, if you do this correct, then you'll what? You'll receive my love. But what if God wants you to teach them his love? Right? Questions like, like, God, what do you want me to learn in this season right now? Do you know that maybe you're facing something and the Lord goes, I want to show you my strength. I want to show you my goodness. I want you to be so reliant on me that you no longer have confidence, like Paul said, what? In your own human effort. You need to ask God questions like this. Like, God, how do I love my people? How do I love my spouse? How do I love my friends? God, how do I love the world? I, I'm so sick and tired of this narrative that as believers in this world, that we are fighting the people of this world. I am so sick of this narrative. I am so tired of this narrative. I'm so tired of this narrative that, that, that Christians and, and believers believe that they're better than the people of this world. We are not better. 
We just know the answer. We know the answer is Jesus and his righteousness, and we gotta learn to love people right where they're at through the love of God, amen? And we gotta ask God, how would you want me to love my coworker? How would you want me to love my neighbor? How would you want me to love somebody? We gotta ask God the right question so that he can do what? He can shepherd. Shepherd your life. Because when he shepherds your life, it leads to peace. Let me show you this. Philippians chapter four. Always be full of the joy of the Lord. And I say again, rejoice. Verse six, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Tell him what, tell him what you need. And thank him for all that he has done. And then you'll experience the peace which exceeds anything you can understand. The peace that guards your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And I can tell you this, when the Lord is shepherding your life, he will lead you to peace. Peace. He will lead you to his peace. And I promise you, his peace is more valuable than anything you could ever own. Because you know what it feels like to have seasons of a lot and still have no peace, still have no real joy, still have no real hope. That's not God's best. That's not his freedom. Point number four, last point is this, is oil. Oil. Psalms 23, verse four, it says, even when I walk through the darkest valleys, I will not be afraid. Amen, for you are close beside me. Close. I know so often when we go through hard times and we go through difficult seasons of our life, we actually think that God has left us, but that's not what the word tells us. It tells us the opposite, that he is actually close. He is next to you. He is beside you. He is with you. It says, your rod and your staff protects and comforts me. Why the rod and staff? Well, because the Lord is next to you as a shepherd and he is defending you. Do you know you don't have to defend yourself? This is why I get so frustrated with social media. Everybody's just defending their point, defending their view, defending what they believe, fighting for what they believe. You don't have to defend yourself. Just live your life with the love and the goodness of God. Let him defend you. Let his rod protect you. He's next to you. Verse five, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemy. How good is that? That the feast that God has for you isn't necessarily always on the mountaintop, but in the valley. The problem is when we're in the valley so often, we don't take the time to recognize that that's where Jesus is gonna be and that we'll feast there with him. We're trying to run away from it. Oh, man. And then it says this. He will honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Let me teach you something about sheep. Sheep, without the oil from the shepherd, because the shepherd will come and he'll take oil and he will pour the oil onto their head and the oil will come down and cover their nostrils and the oil will actually seep up into their nostrils, up into the cavities, up into the cavities that lead to what? The, the sheep's brain. And the oil is actually a barrier. It's a protection. 
for the sheep because there's these little bugs that love to crawl into the nostrils of the sheep. And they'll bore into the nostrils and they'll get into the nostrils. And then eventually these little bugs will actually go up their nostrils, go up the cavities of their nostrils and get into the sheep's head, into their brain. And once it gets into the sheep's brain, it is so painful and the sheep are so tormented that the sheep will find big rocks, big hard rocks, and the sheep will actually bang their heads against the rocks, hoping to get these bugs out of their head. But the problem is it won't work. Because what what do they need? They need the oil. Because here's what's so powerful about the oil. When the shepherd finds a sheep that has banged their head against the rock over and over again, a good shepherd will what? Pour oil onto their head so the oil comes down, covers their nostrils, and goes up through the nostrils into their brain. So the oil will actually save them. It will actually free them. And the Lord goes, I'm a good shepherd. And if you allow me to shepherd you, I'll pour out my oil. What is his oil? It's the oil of the Holy Spirit. He says, I'll pour it out on you so that what? I'll protect your what? Your mind. I'll protect you from the fear. I'll protect you from the worry. I'll protect you from the anxiety. I'll protect you from all of the plans of the enemy because that's how we feel in life. We feel like, man, worry gets in there, fear gets in there, doubt gets in there, anxiety gets in there. And what do we feel like? I just want to bang my head against the wall. If you've ever been truly full of anxiety, if you've ever really had worry, if you've ever really felt real fear, you can feel it in your head. And you're like, I'll do just about anything to get this out. And the Lord goes, all you have to do is come to me. (laughs) All you have to do is come to me. Let me be the shepherd. Let me guide you to the victory. Let me lead you out of the darkness. Let me pour my oil upon you. Let me free your thought life. Let me free you from this worry. Let me free you from this anxiety. And here's what I want to tell you. This isn't something we can just hope for. It's a real place. See, we hear these things in church and we go, oh man, that sounds so good, but I just don't know if that's a real place. Let me tell you, it is a real place with the shepherd. There is real rest in the shepherd. There is real grace in the shepherd. There is real peace. There is real freedom from fear and worry and anxiety when you're trusting him to shepherd your life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Come on. 